Is Tesla's recommendation to charge their LFP battery equipped standard range vehicles regularly to 100% actually good for battery life? Stick around as I examine the latest data here in 2024 and answer that question. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Note that this video is a correction to a previously published video where I had a mix up in the LFP degradation chart. Thanks to those of you who in that past video pointed out in the comments section that the LFP equipped Model Y or Model 3 does not have a 67 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the chart that I used last time was wrong and this is one of the clues into that. I reached out to Tessie and asked them for battery degradation for LFP equipped vehicles and they mistakenly sent me a chart for the battery degradation of the 4680 equipped standard range all wheel drive Model Y instead. Nonetheless, I reached back out to Tessie and they sent me the correct chart this time and I was completely surprised with just how low the battery degradation of this vehicle is after 45,000 miles. But in addition to the Tessie data, I'm including in this video some of your responses from the question that I posed at the end of the last video. And I asked you to share some of your charging habits with your LFP equipped Tesla vehicles and how much range loss you had experienced. And I got some great answers from that. And I'm going to share a few of those. So even if you watched the first video, I believe this video is still worth watching. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. If you pull up the latest version of the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual, Tesla has removed the section in the manual that specifically covered charging lithium iron phosphate batteries. And instead, the manual has a note that says to refer to the information on the vehicle touchscreen, and it describes how you can find the specific charging instructions for your vehicle. I assume that Tesla removed the specific LFP battery pack instructions from the owner's manual because it was confusing to some of those who had Tesla vehicles that maybe didn't have LFP batteries and they were not aware of the difference between the battery types. So Tesla instead thought it'd be a better idea to include these instructions directly in the software. And I believe that was a good idea. But nonetheless, if you pull up an older version of the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual, that manual includes the following note under the charging section quote, for vehicles with lithium iron phosphate high voltage batteries, Tesla recommends you keep your charge limit to 100% even for daily use and that you fully charge your vehicle to 100% at least once per week. The main reason for this 100% charge recommendation appears to be related to calibrating the car's BMS system. Since estimating the charge state of lithium iron phosphate batteries is somewhat difficult in the middle parts of the cycle, a good calibration is important to make sure that the car's software gives an accurate range estimate. And so regularly charging to 100% helps calibrate this system and once again gives a more accurate range estimate from the car's software. But in addition to that, this practice should also help with balancing each individual cell in the battery pack as well. Note that this recommendation is in stark contrast to the rest of Tesla's vehicles that are equipped with nickel based battery packs. And with those battery packs, you should not regularly charge to 100%, but you should set your daily limit at somewhere around 80% or so, and only charge to 100% as needed when you're about to take a long trip or something like that. This will help extend the lifetime of your nickel based battery pack. Okay, with Tesla's recommendation in mind, let's now move over to the battery degradation data. Now, back in October of 2022, I published a video about this topic with early LFP battery retention data from Tessie. Based on Tessie's response to my question back in 2022, of course, this was early data, but it appeared like Tesla's LFP battery packs were going to lose somewhere around 10% of their battery capacity after just 50,000 miles as compared to a similar 10% loss with Tesla's nickel-based batteries at around 100,000 miles on average. In that past video, I assumed that Tesla recommending that you regularly charge these LFP equipped vehicles to 100% was the reason for this faster degradation. But once again, let's look at the most recent data here in 2024 and see if this is still the case. Does the data still suggest that Tesla's LFP battery packs have a faster battery degradation rate than their nickel based packs? Based on the data in this chart, it looks like after 45,000 miles, the LFP equipped Model Y should only lose somewhere around 2% of its battery capacity, which is extremely impressive. And although this chart does not include data for the LFP equipped Tesla Model 3, as far as I know, they both have the same battery pack. So this data should also correlate well 
with the um, LFP equipped Model 3 as well. But nonetheless, if you look at this data, the battery degradation after 45 thousand miles is extremely low. To demonstrate just how impressive this is, let's now compare that number to the rest of Tesla's fleet, also using data from Tessie. If you go over to tessie.com forward slash stats, Tessie has several charts, including a battery retention chart here. And I pulled this data on January 10th, and this is data for over 118 million drives, showing the battery retention for Tesla's various vehicles after 100,000 miles. Now do note that this data is for all of Tesla's Model 3s, Model Ys, Ss, and Xs, and it does include, for example, some LFP Model 3s and Model Ys. So it's not completely isolated, but it is nonetheless a good trend indicator here to compare the LFP equipped battery pack to. So I've taken that chart and I've annotated it a bit, and you can see that I've marked there at a point of roughly 45,000 miles what the battery capacity loss is for each of these vehicles, the Model S, X, 3, and Y. In addition, now that I know that that previous chart that Tessie sent me was for the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y with 4680 batteries, I also annotated this chart and did a little bit of math, and it appears like after 45,000 miles, the 4680 equipped Model Y will lose somewhere around 6.1% of its battery capacity. So when you put this all together in this chart, you can see that that 2% battery degradation after 45,000 miles is very solid, especially when you compare it to the other Model 3 and Model Y battery packs. Now I do wanna be clear here that although Tesla recommends that you regularly charge these LFP equipped vehicles to 100%, that doesn't necessarily mean that owners are all doing that. I understand that there are a number of people that are not doing that practice, but let's assume that a good portion of Tesla owners are regularly charging to 100% more than once per week. It looks like this recommendation is not having a large negative effect on battery degradation overall, and that these LFP battery packs are indeed very impressive when it comes to longevity. Now, with all that in mind, I now want to cover several of your comments from that past video regarding your charging habits and the amount of battery capacity you have lost in your experience. This first comment comes from at Antoine Pagu 8336. And according to this comment, after 89,000 kilometers, which is equal to over 55,000 miles, their 2022 Model 3 with an LFP battery pack that they charge regularly to 100% has only lost around 1.6% of its capacity. So that data does seem to line up very well with Tessie's data. In addition, at Nanusky327 also commented here, and it looks like after 20,000 miles, their Model 3 with LFP batteries lost around 1.8% of its capacity, and that's after two years and somewhat regularly charging to 100%. User at O'Toole Nile also shared their experience with an LFP equipped Model Y that is charged to 100% around once per week and has experienced no range loss. So those are some good results showing just how low the battery degradation is for the LFP equipped Tesla vehicles. But there also was a comment here from Ann Pat Salos who owns a 2023 Model 3 rear wheel drive and that has LFP batteries and a 2023 long range Model Y. And it appears like with the LFP Model 3, that vehicle has lost around 4.5% of its battery capacity, and the Model Y equipped with 2170 batteries has only lost around 2% of its battery capacity. And it was written here that these vehicles were only bought a month apart. As far as charging habits, both of these vehicles are regularly charged to 80%, but nonetheless, this is an interesting example to share as well. I do wanna make it clear here that a lithium iron phosphate battery is a type of lithium ion battery. Sometimes I'll see articles and they'll talk about the difference between lithium ion batteries and lithium iron phosphate batteries. But that's not a good comparison there because lithium iron phosphate batteries are lithium ion batteries. What you really need to do is compare the cathode chemistry of batteries, the nickel-based chemistries, for example, and the iron-based chemistries, NMC, NCA versus LFP. And one of the reasons why charging lithium ion batteries regularly to 100% often is not a good idea has to do with the fact that at elevated cell voltages, the electrolytes in a battery can begin to break down. A fully discharged cell will have a much lower voltage than a fully 
charge cell, and as that charge drops a little bit, the voltage does continue to drop. However, since LFP batteries have a lower nominal and max voltage as compared to nickel-based chemistries, electrolyte degradation should be less of a problem with LFP batteries, and I believe this is one of the big reasons why you can regularly charge to 100% without experiencing a lot of battery degradation with LFP batteries. On that topic, I did want to read this comment by at Dave Hayes 8812 in response to that first video. And Dave wrote here, quote, Teslas are more conservative when limiting the voltage at both ends to protect the battery. Typical LFP battery manufacturers recommend 2.5 volts at 0% and 3.65 volts at 100% charge. I have measured a cell voltage of 3.185 volts at 9% and 3.361 volts at 100%, which means they keep the cells in the linear part of the voltage curve and never put them into the stress zones at the higher and lower end. So I just don't need to care much about charging to 80% or 100% from a damage point of view. If this comment from Dave Hayes is accurate, and it appears to be, this is a really interesting point and could be one of the reasons why Tesla's LFP battery packs are experiencing very low degradation. So the data seems to suggest that Tesla's LFP batteries are experiencing a very low amount of degradation, and that's despite the fact that Tesla recommends you regularly charge to 100%. So that does not appear to be having a big negative effect on battery degradation. So that's a really good sign. I am looking forward to longer term data coming out in a few years that will reveal even more. And I really want to see data for after 100,000 miles, after 150,000 miles, after 200,000 miles to see just how the LFP battery packs are holding up. If you own a high mileage Model 3 or Model Y that's equipped with LFP batteries, please share your experience in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your charging habits once again, and also how much range loss you have experienced. I also want to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.